said it. You just have to believe it and that's it. Dr. Anthony L. Trice, dedicated to sound teaching, strong training, leadership, and development. Prayers are being answered and testimonies all around the world. Helping change one life at a time. Find out how to be a partner with Anthony Trice Ministerial Network. And thank you for tuning in for today's message. Say, neighbor, there are some things that you need to go through. And the reason why you need to go through so you can get the experience for where God is taking you. The Bible says whom the Lord called, he was. There are some things in life that God wants to qualify you for. And he's going to use your what? Experience. Read. And behold. And behold. This word behold means get ready. Watch out. So get ready to happen. Read. There was a man named Zacchaeus. There was a man named Zacchaeus. Read. Which was the chief among the publicans. The Bible says he was the chief among the publicans. That means he was a tax collector. And not only did he collect taxes, but he stole some too. He was rich. The Bible says he was what? Rich. He was wealthy. He was well to do. But he was bound. Yeah. Lot folk rich. Yeah. But they bound. Yeah. I went to California a couple of weeks ago and went to Beverly Hills and yeah. cars and houses. And I'm not against that because God wants to have those things. Right, right. But you can tell that folks will buy. Uh -huh. wow. Anytime you don't know Christ, uh -huh. anytime you don't have a relationship with God. You are bound. Amen. Watch this. What you bound for? Hell? Come on. Because your money can't get you to hell. Read. And he sought to see Jesus. Notice, he sought to see Jesus. Uh -huh. Who he was. Who he was. He didn't know him. But he heard about him. So he wanted to know who Jesus was. Read. And could not for the press. He could not get close to Jesus because Jesus was surrounded by people. Read. Because he was little of stature. Because he was a short man. Read. And he ran before. Look at the effort that this tax collector is putting forth to get to know who Jesus was. Say name him. You will never find out who Jesus is. To get to know Jesus. A lot of folks don't know Jesus because they ain't put for no effort. Read. To see him. To see him. For he was to pass that way. He knew that Jesus was getting ready to pass that way. And in order to experience Christ, you got to put yourself in a position. Read. And when Jesus came to the place, uh -huh. he looked up. He looked up. Now, now notice, Zacchaeus didn't know what Jesus was. Jesus knew what Zacchaeus was. Yeah. Jesus knew what you had in life. Yeah. Read. And saw him. And he saw him. And said unto him. Read. Zacchaeus. Uh-huh. Make haste. Notice. Jesus knew his name. Jesus called him. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste. Read. And come down. Notice. Notice. Zacchaeus was in a sycamore tree. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, he said, Today, today I must 
to abide at thy house. Zacchaeus, come out the tree, man, because today I'm going to stay at your house. Now notice, notice Jesus set up on the coat. Now Jesus getting ready to set up on Zacchaeus' house. Read. And he made haste. And notice, Zacchaeus got in the hair. I, I want to serve notes on God y'all today. Uh -huh. Y'all need to get in the hair. <laughs> to get a relationship with God. Uh -huh. Over the last two weeks, I got four calls that somebody died. Wow. And these ain't, these ain't old folks. These young folks died. Yeah. Yeah. Folks are dying in their sleep. Yeah. People are being murdered. Yeah. And folks still playing. <laughs> what am I playing with? My soul. Yeah. 50, 60, 70 years old and still don't know Jesus. Oh. Still lost. Still walking around and don't realize that you are one step away from eternity. Yeah. Yeah. And the devil don't want you to understand your spiritual condition. So he keeps you blind by what else? Because he don't want you to come into the understanding that you are in need of a savior. I mean, man, two guys I grew up with died. They just found them dead. Folks get murdered. I'm talking about young folks getting murdered. Not just dying, but gunned down like a dog. And this is what's amazing to me. You got folks still walking around don't have a clue. Let me serve notice on you what's going on. The death angel is in the land. And Jesus said, where I see the blood, I'll pass on. What do you mean about the blood? When you give your life to Christ, when you can say that the blood of Jesus covers your life. When you trying to find out who Jesus is. And don't have an understanding that when you cross over to the other side, that's not it. Don't understand when you cross on the other side, your money, your house, your, your, your car, your diamond, your mink, your, all that stuff stays on this side. means anything once you cross over. The only thing that's going to be important once you cross over, did you have a relationship with Christ? Thank you for a couple of patty cakes. Because people don't want to hear nothing about dying. Well, you need to because folks die. And out of ignorance, we don't understand that's not it after you die. That's just the beginning of your Eternity in heaven or in hell. Amen. Amen. Read. They made haste and came down. Zacchaeus made haste and humbled himself. Uh huh. And received him joyful. Notice he received Christ. You have to receive Christ in your life by faith. How do you know? What does it mean, Pastor Christ, to receive Christ? That means I accept him into my life. And my life is no longer my own. That's right. See, it's impossible right. to accept Christ and don't change. That's right. If you haven't changed, it's because you haven't accepted Christ. Amen. That's what I mean. Used to be a game banger. Used to be an alcoholic. Used to be a dope smoker. Used to be a whole monger. And nothing has changed, you got a Christian. You just a professing church goer. We got a lot of folks doing that. Singing in the choir, ain't saved. 
playing on the instruments and not saved. Yeah. A deacon and not saved. Yeah. Got the title preacher and not saved. Yeah. Usher, not saved. Yeah. Greeter, not yeah. saved. You walking in the church don't save you. Yeah. Works don't save you. That's right. But God saved you to work. Read. And when they saw it, and when they saw it, they all murmured. They what? Murmured. Read. Saying that he was going to be with the guests, with the man that is a sinner. Watch this. If people talk about Jesus, they're going to talk about you. Watch this. You don't talk about people that ain't doing nothing. If you ain't doing it, anybody talking about you. When you start doing something for God, people going to talk about you. That's the sign that what you're doing is pleasing to God. Read. And Zacchaeus stood. And Zacchaeus stood. Read. And said unto the Lord. Read. Behold, Lord, uh -huh. the half of my goods I give to the poor. Watch this. How do you know Pastor Trice that he got saved? Because his wallet got saved and his purse got saved. Y'all <laughs> folks say they saved, but your wallet ain't saved. Okay. See, y'all quiet on that one. Your purse ain't saved. A lot of folks saved in words only. Because uh -huh. notice, when Zacchaeus got saved, all the people that he stole from, he went and paid them back. Watch this, read. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, read, I restore him fourfold. So when Zacchaeus got converted, he had a change of heart. And when his heart changed, his attitude changed. When his attitude changed, his walk changed. When his walk changed, his conversation changed. And when his conversation changed, his person say and Mark got saved. Mm. I folks they say, but God ain't got your money. You ain't say it. Why do you say that, Pastor Trice? Because the Bible says no man can serve money and God. Amen. Either God is your God or money is your God. Amen. And a lot of folks got in their money. You know why? Because their money dictates every decision you make. Y'all follow me. You preach it anyhow, Bishop. Come on. Watch this. Read verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. This day, is salvation come to this house? You know what Jesus said? Today, deliverance, and that's what salvation is, has come to your house. See, real deliverance bring about a change. If you haven't experienced a change, you're not saved yet. You're just going to church. And it's already come as you are, but don't. See, a lot of folks can't change. They come to church, but they ain't changed. Read. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham. Watch this verse 10. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who's the son of man? Yeah. What's the purpose of Jesus coming? Save. To seek and to save that which is what? If you're not saved, if you don't have a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, then you're lost. I, I look good. I'm educated. That don't mean nothing if you ain't saved. Why you say that? Because education ain't going to get you to heaven. Amen. Having a lot of money ain't going to get you to heaven. Okay. Who your mama and daddy is ain't going to get you to heaven. Amen. The only thing going to get you to heaven is that you get saved. Amen. For real. Amen. For real. Amen. For real. Amen. For real. Amen. When you really get saved, you get a chance coming in your life. So the purpose of Jesus coming is not to give you a husband. Not to give you a wife. Not to give you a car in a big house. There's nothing wrong with that. What we have to understand, those things are just benefits that comes with your salvation. That's right. That's right. So we got this thing twisted. A lot of folks come to church getting saved for the wrong reason. Watch this. We all know you. John chapter 8, verse 32. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Jesus, Jesus has a need. 
and keep talking about your needs, but we're going to talk about his needs. Read. And ye shall know the truth. Notice this is Jesus talking because of the red. He said, ye shall what? Know. This word know means understand. He said, when you understand the truth, the truth that you understand will make you free. You don't get free because you just heard the word. You get free when you start understanding the word. And the Holy Spirit has to give you spiritual understanding. If not, what I'm saying out of my mouth is just empty words to you. Amen. Read that one more time. Know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. This word know means understand. Uh -huh. And the truth shall make you free. I remember the times when I came to church when I was younger. And the preacher would be preaching and I didn't have an understanding. I remember that. But then I remember when the light came on too. It was the time I would come to church and I had a clue what was going on. They were shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues and the man of God was preaching. I was like, <laughs> you know what? I was lost. But then I remember coming to church and everybody was shouting and dancing and the preacher was preaching. I was with it because I, I had to understand. Look at verse 36, read. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. He said, if. That means that you have a responsibility in getting free. Read. Ye shall be free indeed. If the Son of Man, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be what? Free. You know what Jesus is saying? I'm the only person that can really set you free. Not alcohol anonymous. Not drug rehab. If you really want to get free, it's going to take me to get you free. Okay. It's going to take me to untie you. That's right. Indeed. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Say, baby, we almost done. Baby, we almost done. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Read. Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord is that what? Spirit. Read. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Watch this, watch this. When Christ comes into your life, watch this. Jesus Christ is no longer here in the flesh, but his spirit is still here. So what comes into your life is the spirit of Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit. Say God, God. is a what? Spirit. He's not flesh and blood. He's not a he or she. He's a spirit. And the spirit of God comes to live on the inside of you. When he comes into your life by faith, then he liberates you. The more he comes in, the more you get free. That's why the Bible says, the day you hear my word, heart not your heart. When a lot of people hear the truth, they automatically cleanse up. You know why somebody say why? Because they're not ready to change. That's it. That's it. But the more you yield, and the more you hear the truth, and the more you open up your heart, the more the Spirit of Christ comes to sit on you. Read that one more time. Now the Lord is that Spirit. Who is that Spirit? And we have to understand there's a lot of spirits out here. Because people keep saying, what's the problem? What's going on in our society? Why the government is the way it is? Why are people killing and murder? Murder is a spirit. Uh, homosexuality is a spirit. Drunkenness is a spirit. Sleeping around is a spirit. Cursing people out is a what? It's not, it's not flesh and blood. It is a spirit that's working through the person that's causing them to act the way they act. It's a spirit. And in order for you to understand that it's a spirit, you have to be spiritual. The Bible says a natural man receives not the things that come from the spirit of God Be what? Born again. Why do I 
your attitude about a particular thing causes you to stay. So in order to stay free, after you get free, you have to learn how to stand, watch this, on the word. Watch this. You cannot stand on something that you don't understand. So the reason why we come to church is so we can get a spiritual understanding yeah, yeah. about life. Amen. Stand to you. Notice, Jesus did not sit upon his call until the call got free. Once the call got free, then Jesus set up on the call. And Jesus was able to ride through Jerusalem with triumph. If you want to triumph in life, you have to allow God's spirit to sit up on you. And he can't sit up on you till you get what? Satan don't want you to know you're bound. Not for sitting in church bound and don't even realize that they are bound. If you're here today and you can admit to yourself that you know what, I am tired up to some stuff. I'm tired up to some people. I'm tired up to some behaviors. I'm tired up to a certain mindset that's causing me to be stuck in a certain place in life. We should be progressing. We should be moving forward, not stuck. But a lot of folks are stuck and they're tired of well, 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 how do I know whether or not God's spirit is in my life? Easily. Are you free? Hey, that was a powerful, awesome word from the Lord. I would like to thank you for tuning into our television broadcast on today. We, hey man, God is doing some awesome things here in this ministry. Our members are being delivered. They're being healed. They're experiencing financial breakthrough. And I want you to experience that same anointing that's on this ministry in your life by partnering with me here at Anthony Trice Ministry. You can go to my website at anthonytrice.org and become a monthly partner. God bless you. Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony L. Trice. I'm the senior pastor of Covenant for Life Christian Center Church in St. Louis. I have some exciting news. I just finished my new book, Integrity, The Missing Ingredient. This is a life-changing book. This is a book about the story of Job. Job chapter one talks about how Job was upright. That means he was a man that can be trusted. He was a man of integrity. I discovered when God can trust you, he'll give you the world. And Job showed in Job chapter one how prosperous Job was because God was able to trust Job because Job was a man of integrity. So go to my website and order my new book, Integrity, The Missing Ingredient, at anthonytrice.org, or you can go to lifeway.org. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in St. Louis area, please come visit Covenant for Life Christian Center at 7200 West Forsen, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136, or give us a call at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.